Hi everyone, I'm Francois. Today we'll be looking at the Orient Defender Generation 2. You can call it the Orient Sport Watch, you can call it Orient Gen 2 Automatic Field Watch, call it what you want. I call it a fantastic watch. So let's get right into it because it's time to watch. Before we get into the watch itself, let's do a quick history about Orient. They started as a Yoshida Watch Shop in 1901. It's named after the founder Shogoro Yoshida, and they were selling imported pocket watches at the time. If we fast forward to 1951, they became Orient Watch Company after the, uh, the name of their uh, first Orient Star watch that became popular. If we fast forward to 2009, they became a subsidiary of Seiko Epson. Finally, in 2017, they became officially part of Epson Sales Japan Corporation, which markets the Orient watch, as well as becoming part of Akita Epson Corporation, who manufactures them, as well as manufacturing the movements for, you guessed it, Seiko, of course. And Seiko reminds me that this is a good segue to my next review. This is the SRPE63, which is a Seiko 5, as you can see, with a nice NATO-like blue strap and a nice sunburst dial and that very reliable 4R36 powering the movement inside. So if you like these types of reviews, don't hesitate. Press the like button. It truly helps, and uh, of course, I encourage you to subscribe and, and also press that notification bell. So this way, when I come out with the review of this Seiko 5, you'll be notified. Let's get right into the measurements of this nice watch. The diameter is 42 millimeters. I should say it's a little over 42 millimeters. The lug-to-lug -lug is 49, a little over 49. The thickness is just a little over 12 millimeters and the lug width is 22 exactly on this NATO like strap. You have a hardened mineral crystal for the crystal on the front and it has a fixed bezel. You can notice the finish on the bezel and the casing is PVD with a mix of uh, polish and very fine brushing I should say. It's even finer on the um, bezel itself. The PVD coating, of course, is uh, essentially a, um, uh, a process that bonds the small layers of fine metal to the casing itself, and it helps with the durability, and of course, it helps with the scratch proofness. Uh, case in point, of course, uh, I've been wearing this for a little over two uh, weeks now, uh, non-stop and uh, there's not a scratch on it so it really does help it's not that I baby my watches uh, a, a watch is made to be worn I take care of them but uh, I'm careful with them but I don't baby them I want to turn your attention to the case back itself I don't know if you recall last time when I did my unboxing there were a few marks in there that I wasn't too sure about and I got my response so I know what they are. The first one was the Epson, the, the name Epson right there. And as I mentioned in my history of the uh, Orient watch, they are now part of Seiko Epson. So that answers that question. The other one was the caliber itself, the F6B2 right there. <clears throat> Essentially, it's the caliber. But if you go in Orient's website, they indicate F6B22, which basically indicates that this is the second generation of this movement, which adds the capabilities of hand winding and second hacking as well. So that movement, it's a Japan movement. And of course, that stainless steel, screw down stainless steel back and water resistant to 100 bars, uh, 10 bars, I should say, 100 meters. And of course, that screw down enables you to have that peace of mind of that 100 meters and as well as having a screw down crown. 
So to operate this movement, like I said, this is a screw down crown. Basically just unscrew it. You hear that pop and at that first position, you can hand wind. The second position, one click out, you can change the date and the day at that 10 o'clock. You see that that hand will move to change the day. When you come out another click, third position, that's where you can change the time as well as hack the seconds. Of course, when you push, push everything back in, screw that back in, everything starts back again. So let's talk about this dial itself. I feel that they uh, they were original in the placement of this uh, of these sub dials and the logo as well. You have the sub dial at the ten o'clock for the days, the uh, sub dial at the five o'clock for the twenty four hour mark, where you have that uh, red hand there that's on the p.m. side. If it was on the right side, it would be a.m. You have the Orient logo between the 1 and 2 o'clock, as well as the date window right there at the 3 o'clock. I feel that the uh, they, they did a good job with the date window. It ties in well with the markers and it keeps the same proportion proportions so it doesn't stand out too much. So I moved the hands out of the way so that you can see the color on that 24 hour hand right there, that red, as well as the tip of the second hand where you see another splash of red. So I guess if you want to have a strap with a splash of red, it will tie in well. You'll notice as well, the um, the hands themselves, they're semi-skeletonized and they're sword-like hands with loom, as well as all the hour markers are loomed. They don't specify the number of layers or the uh, the type of loom, but they only say it's super, it's, um, uh, Swiss Super Luminova and I figure it's the C3 version because it glows green a nice green glow so let's talk about this strap this NATO like strap this uh, model here comes with uh, this NATO like strap and I think there are at least four other models of which one comes with a leather strap and a cream dial there's a green dial with a bracelet and uh, I think there are either two, one or two, one with a dark blue or a, a, a black dial, along with this version here of the dark gray, which comes with the NATO straps. The, uh, the origin of NATO-like straps dates uh, back uh, 1973, I think, if I remember correctly, it was the British Ministry of Defense that had a specific product code for the equipment dedicated to NATO military personnel. So it was, uh, that product code was NATO-G1098. And some refer to this as basically a G10 strap. And of course, now we are shortening it uh, to NATO itself. Uh, as you know, there's no NATO branded straps anywhere. So that's why we should say NATO-like straps. So here's how it works for those who haven't seen this yet. It's really simple. The only thing that uh, I, I indicated in my unboxing is that it adds material here, so it adds a little thickness. However, you can either do one, one or two things. You can uh, take out this extra layer here, just cut it off here, and you only have this portion in the back, so you have only one layer. So it becomes what I, what I think we call a Zulu strap. The Zulu straps are shorter and have only one layer here on the back. The other thing that's specific to NATO, other than this extra layer here, and we'll talk about what this is used for, is that this is longer. So it was because the military wanted to have longer straps to put over their coats and their military equipment. So they needed to have a longer strap. But when you don't need the strap, and I'll show you how, you just put it in and re-loop it back in these keepers. So the main function of this here is basically when you put it in, it's to make sure that because our, the army personnel are very active, it's to make sure that this blocks the watch case 
to go th too far on one side or the other. So it blocks it on both sides. So that's the key part of this extra layer. When you put it on, and let me show it on this version here because this is also a NATO strap, there's extra material right here. So what you do is basically take it off and loop it right in if you have extra material right here. So let me just take this one off. And see, it's the same concept. With that extra layer here. To go back to the Defender, you would take it off completely. It's easy to change, of course, because you don't have anything that's fixed in the lug bars right here, in the spring bars. So these spring bars here are kept here. This here is a little fatter, I would say. There's they're they're built to be tough, I would say, to to withstand some 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 torque. And if you need to change it, it's easy to change. So thus the reason why they had specific product codes, because they could just order this strap, take out the old one, and put in the new one. The way you put it on is you make sure the buckle is at the 12 o'clock and that you have your material, your extra material in the back here. You slip it simply in the spring bar here. Then slip it back here. And then you slip it in that keeper, like I said, that would keep the watch from slipping from one side to the other. It's as simple as that. So when you put it on, you basically slip it in the buckle. Adjust it comfortably to your wrist. Mine is a seven inch wrist for those who want to know. And then you have these two keepers. Slip in the first one second one and you have that extra material basically you just fold it push it back in and sometimes it gets right up to the second keeper slip it in right under there so it's nice and clean and there you go it's as simple as that so there's the wrist shot so that's how you operate the watch and the NATO strap. So I hope you like these types of reviews. And if you do, don't hesitate, press the like button. It truly helps the channel. And uh, I encourage you to subscribe as well and press that notification bell. So you'll be notified of all my upcoming reviews, including the upcoming Seiko 5. So thanks again for tuning in and hope to see you next time.